The late King Hussein of Jordan, father of the scandalous Princess Haya, reigned for nearly half a century, during which time passions raged in the palace. They were so turbulent that the echoes of intrigue are still felt today. At their origins were four wives of Hussein bin Talal. These women found happiness with the king, but at the same time they drank the bitter cup of disappointment. Who was the king's favorite wife? What intrigues was Hussein's mother weaving? And why does the royal family still hate Queen Noor? Don't forget to like this video. Let's get started. King Hussein of Jordan came to the throne when he was only 16 years old. He ruled for 47 years until his death in 1999. During this time, the monarch had four wives. They bore him 12 children, and another girl was adopted. Each of the king's women loved her husband in their own way and tried to provide a better life for their children. In addition, Hussein's spouses fought desperately with his mother named Zayn. It so happened that the mother-in-law hated her daughters-in-law, no matter what positive qualities they possessed. Paradoxically, it was his mother who found the first wife for her 19-year-old son. She turned out to be a girl named Dina from an aristocratic Arab family. Dina was beautiful, educated, but had almost no common interests with her husband. Hussein's mother considered the princess from the Hashemite family to be an ideal match for her son. She independently decided on the engagement, and the young king didn't dare to contradict her. Interestingly, the girl was seven years older than the groom, which is rare for Eastern realities. Immediately after the wedding, Dina was given the status of queen, and a year later she gave birth to a daughter, Alia. It soon became clear that Dina was not only beautiful, but also a very ambitious lady. She sought to participate in the governance of Jordan, actively influencing her husband. Thus, the role of the mother in making state decisions was steadily decreasing. Zayn perceived this as a betrayal on the part of her daughter-in-law, who became queen thanks to her. Hussein's mother was determined to destroy her son's marriage. Since it was already fragile, it was not difficult to do so. Having a huge influence in the palace, Zayn conducted several successful intrigues that vilified Dina in the eyes of the young monarch. As a result, two years after the wedding, the couple divorced. The king's mother took cruel revenge on her son's ex-wife for her willfulness and disobedience. She isolated the daughter of Dina and Hussein in the palace and ordered that the ex-wife of the king should not be allowed to go there. Dina cried for days on end and begged her mother-in-law to let her see her daughter at least from afar, but the powerful woman was adamant. This went on for several years, until the second wife persuaded the king to lift the ban on Dina seeing her daughter. By the way, King Hussein chose his second wife on his own. Moreover, in the matter of marriage, he went against his mother who intended to choose a daughter-in-law according to her own taste. In 1961, the epic movie Lawrence of Arabia was filmed in Jordan. Hussein didn't miss the opportunity to see with his own eyes the shooting of battle scenes. It was here that he met his future wife, the Englishwoman Antoinette Gardiner. They married in 1961 against the will of the king's mother. Antoinette loved her husband so much that she converted to Islam and agreed to change her European name to a Muslim one. She came to be called Muna al Hussein, which means Hussein's wish and that wish was enough to give the couple four children during their nine years of marriage. One of them, Abdullah, became crown prince, and after his father's death, king of Jordan. Hussein's mother made every effort to prevent Muna from being given the title of queen. Zayn had two powerful arguments for that. First, the girl is not of aristocratic origin. Second, she is not even an Arab. All Hussein managed to do was to give his wife the title of princess. Zayn openly hated Muna and tried to divorce her from her son. In the early 70s, she succeeded. Mother introduced the king to the irresistible Palestinian Alia. Hussein fell madly in love with her and decided to take her as his second wife. However, Muna didn't want to share her husband with another woman. This led to a divorce, which caused a loud scandal in the Middle East. As you may have guessed, Alia, the daughter of a Palestinian diplomat, became King Hussein's third wife and perhaps his greatest love. They were married in 1972. The woman was immediately given the title of queen. Unlike the homemaker Muna, Alia was extremely active yet well-educated. 
Thanks to this combination, she was entrusted with overseeing education and medicine in Jordan. Dozens of modern schools and hospitals opened under her leadership. She also succeeded in granting Jordanian women suffrage and many other freedoms. Aliyah shone at social receptions and interacted with the common people on an equal footing. Because of her democracy and kindness, the Jordanians were extremely fond of their new queen and literally carried her in their arms. King Hussein did the same. According to his relatives, the years spent with Aliyah were the happiest in the monarch's life. The woman bore her husband two children, including Princess Haya. Another child, an orphan from Palestine, was adopted by the royal couple. Unfortunately, the happiness didn't last long. Four years after her marriage, the beautiful and active queen died in an air crash. The helicopter on which she was returning to the Jordanian capital, Amman from a hospital for refugees, crashed. For weeks the whole of Jordan was in mourning, and even Hussein's overbearing mother grieved for the beautiful queen. The Amman airport was named in honor of the tragically dead woman, and King Hussein couldn't recover from his grief for a long time. Nevertheless, life went on. A year and a half later, the monarch married for the fourth and last time. His chosen one was an American woman, Lisa Halabi. She was 17 years younger than Hussein and in addition incredibly beautiful. According to relatives, the beauty of the woman is connected with her origin. Ethnically, she is half Syrian and half Swedish. Ironically, the future queen of Jordan met Hussein at an airport named after Alia, her predecessor. The king's mother traditionally disliked her daughter-in-law and began to plot against her. First in the palace and then throughout Jordan, a rumor was spread that Lisa was an insidious American spy. Strangely enough, many people believed it. In particular, some of the king's children from previous marriages still believe that their stepmother is a CIA agent. Perhaps this belief was due to the competition of Hussein's descendants for the throne of Jordan. As for the king himself, he sincerely loved his last wife. When the time came to think of an Islamic name for her, the king chose the word Noor. Noor al Hussein means the light of Hussein in Arabic. The fourth wife had the most trials. Her mother-in-law Zayn hated her daughter-in-law so much that she defiantly spoke to her only in Arabic, knowing that Noor had not yet learned this difficult language. The mother-in-law's influence in the palace was no longer so strong, so her efforts to quarrel her son with his wife were not successful. Noor lived with the king for more than 20 years, until his death in 1999. When the king died, the throne went to Abdullah, Hussein's son by his second wife Muna. Abdullah promised his dying father that Hamza, Noor's eldest son, would succeed him. But things turned out differently. Hamza was crown prince until 2004, and then the title passed to Abdullah's son, Al Hussein. Of course, Noor was very upset by this turn. She had always dreamed of seeing her son as king of Jordan. A few years ago, Hamza was accused of plotting against the acting king. His mother was the only one who stood up for him. This finally soured Noor's relationship with the royal family. She was absent from Crown Prince Al Hussein's wedding and did not even congratulate the newlyweds on her Instagram page, although she is quite active on social media. Noor now lives in Jordan and the United States and is involved in social activism. The king's first wife, Dina, married a Palestinian military officer, lived a long life and died in Amman at the age of 89. The second wife, Muna, enjoys the status of mother to the current King Abdullah of Jordan. All these women, and of course, the late Aliyah, are united by inner strength. It was acquired through a difficult but interesting life. There were bright love and hurtful slander, joy of motherhood and bitterness of loss. Do any of them regret the years spent with the ruler of Jordan? Most likely, the answer to this question is no. Almost certainly, the wives of King Hussein remembered their late husband in a kind way. After all, he was an unapproachable and powerful king to everyone, but to them he was a kindred and beloved man. Which of King Hussein's wives do you like the most? Write in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, put a like, see you soon.